Hello, hello, we're back. And today I'd like to look a little bit deeper. I'd like to look into some plutonic rocks. And here we have a porphyritic granite from the Sleeve Gullion Igneous Center in Northern Ireland. And uh, this center is about um, 55 to 58 million years old, I think. And it's certainly part of the larger tertiary igneous suite that uh, was produced at that time. And um, here, I'd like to kind of point out a few features of uh, platonic rocks. And what we see here is we see larger crystals and they are in a finer grained plasma. Let me try to get you a little closer here. Let's see whether we get a good start of this. So here we have larger feldspar crystals. Here we have the uh, big case bar crystals and uh, they are a little bit pinkish. They're often very sown and you can just about see that here, I think. So this chap here and this one and these ones here, they seem to have some stoning. And um, what we see here is that they're floating in a finer grained ground mass. There's also a gray mineral and we see that here. And for instance, also here. And uh, this is mainly quartz. So here we have some larger crystals floating in a finer grained ground mass being effectively made of similar mineralogy being also mainly quartz and kfl spar, but there is some pyroxene in there, a tiny bit of uh, uh, amphibole and a tiny bit of mica is in there as well. In addition, in thin sections, we do see some plagioclase feldspar, but uh, here in the rock, most of it is actually potassium feldspar intergrown with quartz. So, but there's something else in this rock, and that is the dark area over here. And you see also that uh, there's a lot of veins here cutting through this rock. This rock comes from a ring dike intrusion and um, the widely proposed idea how it got into that is that the caldera inside the ring dike collapsed and was squeezing out magma, including some of the marginal crystallite facies, sort of a boundary zone of the magma chamber. And uh, it has been suggested that the caldera collapsed in a trapdoor fashion, i.e. strongly on one side, not so strongly on the other. And that could have allowed for some of the cumulate material to be squeezed out. Once this material was squeezed into the uh, ring fault system and it became the ring dike intrusion, it uh, happened that more gas was percolating through and more events took place, probably tectonic as well as magmatic. And then new material was creeping up, breaking the rock. These veins here are often referred to as tufisite because if you look at them in detail here, for instance, you will actually see that they're made up of tiny little fragments of all sorts of material. And here you see how the material tries to shatter or break off a piece of the granite here. So these shattering processes, they must reflect a lot of gas overpressure. There's a whole network of little veins filled with this rather finely fragmented material that gives rise to these tophysites. So this is typical actually in many of the tertiary granites. We see this on Sky, we see this on Rum and many other places that uh, these late stage um, gases or maybe even as a result of new intrusions, they are trying to break their way through these existing uh, plutonic rocks. And here we really see how the shattering might have come about. So this rock is rather crystalline, but it's not hollow crystalline in that sense because it's got some really fine grained intergrowth materials, partly even amorphous kind of little uh, aggregates in the very small interstices. But um, for most parts, of course, you see crystals here. So if you were to describe this rock as uh, hollow crystalline, you would probably get away with it in the exam. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hope this was useful. And uh, I'm looking forward to our next little session in due course. Thank you and bye-bye.